Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us right here for Market Day Report. I'm Casey Mason. Well, the USDA is furthering its efforts on a vaccination to better prevent the spread of avian influenza. But the agency is also finding that poultry exports could dramatically drop as a result, well, the agency has said a vaccine has been developed that would be effective in chickens, but it's awaiting test results for turkeys and still planning to do more field testing. Now, the USDA's Dr. John Clifford told a House subcommittee that trade constraints continue to be an issue with the potential use of a vaccine. Well, some trade partners have said that if U.S. poultry producers start using a vaccine, exports to their countries would be stalled while a risk assessment was conducted. And that process, well, it could take several months. Well, Tennessee poultry producers are preparing for a possible avian influenza outbreak as wild birds start migrating south. Now, their route will take them on the eastern flyaway, which includes Tennessee. So Tennessee veterinarian Dr. Charles Hatcher joins us today live in our RFD TV studio. Good morning, Dr. Hatcher, and thank you so much for joining good us. Good morning. It's good to be here. We appreciate you being our new Roy Rogers studio here in Nashville. So let's get right to it. Tens of millions of chickens and turkeys were culled this year in the spring due to that outbreak of the avian influenza. So how is Tennessee preparing for a possible outbreak if it occurs here? Well, we're working with our stakeholders, all the producers and commercial industry, as well as USDA in preparation. And we've got a, we've got a task force that's been uh, put together and we're, we, uh, we're planning a response right now for worst case scenario for this fall. All right, now the USDA recently announced a vaccine for avian influenza and it's been proven effective on chickens, as I just said, uh, but is there any possibility it could be ready for use this fall? I think there's a good chance it will be. There's a lot, still some research being done and some development on that. And there's, there's certain recommendations that we have to follow to even use it. But I think it may be ready by this fall. Let's take it right to these farm operations. I mean, what can producers do to help stem a possible spread of avian influenza this fall? Well, they need to do the things that keep the virus from coming in. And first would be uh, keep wild birds away, like uh, ducks and geese, and keep them separate from their operations. All right, we have those birds that are traveling to the eastern flyaway. Um, are they likely to carry the flu as well, you think? Well, we think all flyaways may be affected this fall, and, and it's going to be primarily uh, geese and, and uh, duck, dabbling ducks like mallards. Just any other advice you want to give to maybe the producers tuning in today? It's been, I mean, headlining our news here on RFT TV for quite a while now and uh, kind of the talk of the ag industry, if you will. Anything else you want to share what people can do? Well, there's other things, anything they can do to prevent the virus entry on their farm, and those are biosecurity measures. And uh, so there's been evidence on this first round of outbreaks that people in, at, in equipment and vehicles may spread, spread the virus from farm to farm. And so you, we want to prevent that. All right, anything specific Tennessee has, I mean, you know, it's kind of a spread that we've seen making its way in the Midwest, but we're here kind of in the South. Anything specific about Tennessee and the avian influenza? Well, we're concerned primarily about the Mississippi flyways that crosses the west part of Tennessee, and that's where we think we'll be, could be most effective to start with. All right, well, Doctor, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much for joining us here in Nashville in our new Roy Rogers studio. A little bit more insight into this avian influenza outbreak. Well, thanks for having me. We appreciate it. All right, well, moving on now, dry levels of dry bean rust have been showing up in North Dakota. An extension plant pathologist at North Dakota State University says the frequent heavy dews and moderate to warm temperatures have been favorable for rust development. Now, the best time for a fungicide application to manage